Hello class, Mr. Graziano here. Uh, I'm gonna show you a, a PowerPoint that's introduced our next project, okay? And um, what it will do is explain, uh, this is gonna be the final thing that we're gonna do this semester. And um, I think it's important, you know, we have a class called Sculpture and Design, and um, basically we haven't done much sculpture other than a few things to begin with. So this is gonna be a sculpture that you're gonna be doing at home with materials that you have or you purchase or you find. And I'll explain more in just a second and show you some examples of things that I'd be looking for, okay? So a couple things. Why are we gonna be doing this? Well, basically, I want you to become a more creative thinker. That's why we did the logo designs because I want you to you know, be able to brainstorm ideas and then limit that, then start narrowing those ideas down and finally picking out some real gems. And that's how I want you to approach this assignment. It's another creative assignment, only you're gonna have an end product. Okay, so, um, you know, if you get that end product, it's like figuring out a puzzle when you finally figure out those puzzle pieces that come together, it's, you feel an accomplishment. You know, pride comes when you accomplish a challenge, okay? And why? Because art's awesome. And I want you to do some things just because that's why you took the class, probably because you wanted to create some really cool art. So hopefully that happens for you, okay? So what you're gonna do is create a sculpture of 3D design with found materials. What could those materials be? I just have a list but you can do anything that's not even on this list. These are some examples of things you could use. Paper, you could use wood, you could use stone or rocks, you could use sticks, you could use food, you could use random stuff, toothpicks, pasta, jewelry, puzzle pieces, cups, plastic, anything you can think of, okay? So those are just some random things and you might find some things that, you might have some things at your home that I don't even know that other people that own have and you might take those things and develop a sculpture of those things. So here's an example now, for example, this is pretty elaborate, I don't expect you to do something like this, but this is something that I worked on and what I did over this uh, pandemic is I decided to turn my mailbox into a sculpture. And I went with a steampunk theme and steampunk has this industrial uh, look to it. So what I did is as a good design, I wanted to make sure that my mailbox was a good design. So what I've repeated, the colors or textures I repeated, I've got copper repeating and uh, a gold color repeating and also brass and black. So those would be the colors as far as shapes, tons of circles and cylinders that are repeating, okay? Um, so I'm repeating these colors, shapes, a lot of horizontal lines and curved lines repeating in my design. Notice the chrome that repeats all over, and up here we've got copper and copper and copper down here. We've got brass on the top and brass here. We've got chrome here and copper and brass. So we've got all these elements, and then we've got things that are painted black. So it's a good design. It's an elaborate design. Now, when I started this project, I really did not have any idea where it would end. So it was, to me, it was a puzzle. It was trying to figure out how to put things together. Now, you might not be able to do something like this because you just don't have the know-how or the materials to do it. But if you did want to do something like this and your parents have the know-how, your dad maybe is pretty handy, and you think, Dad, I've got this idea. You can work together with your parents to do this if you'd like, okay? Now, if you want to work with your parents, it's okay, as long as the idea is yours, okay? And it's okay to bounce ideas off your parents. So if you're trying to do something, you say, hey, dad, I don't know how to do this. How can I connect this to this? And he might say, well, I can help you with that. I can drill a hole, we can put a screw in there, or I know I'm good at welding, I could do that. So now that's on a real ambitious side, and I don't expect you to do that much. So like I said, this project is kind of like putting a puzzle together. Uh, a big puzzle's got a lot of pieces, and it's gonna take a while to put together, okay? but you get a satisfaction when you finally completed that puzzle. I think that's why people do puzzles. But the difference is a puzzle, the solution's already been laid out for you. The end product is this picture that someone else has decided. The difference is you get to decide what that end picture is gonna be like. So like I had, started out with a mailbox, pretty plain thing and ended up with that, okay? Now here's some options of materials you could use. You could use wood. Now here are some, a wood collage that I found on the internet. I think this is awesome. So it's pieces of wood that were cut up, stained and painted different colors, put into a frame. And it's, I really love this, I think it's great. Now the one on the right here, you can see it's, it's pieces of wood that are stained different colors, but it also is a functional. 
it acts as a little shelf holding the candle and these little sculptures. So you could make something that's purely decorative or you can make something that actually has a function, okay? Here's another wood design that is completely decorative. It has no function other than it looks pretty cool. But once again, it follows the elements of design. Notice the repetition of lines, the repetition of colors. Notice the balance of colors. So really, really important in your sculpture design are two things, repetition and also balance. Now this really doesn't have a center of interest. Yours can have a center of interest, but it doesn't have to, okay? Here's this thing that I did in my bathroom a few years back. I wanted to decorate a wall, and I saw this uh, thing on Pinterest where people had paneling or wood sides that were different colors. So what I did is I took some uh, flooring that I bought at a, a Habitat for Humanity Restore, box of wood that literally cost me $10, flipped it over on the other side and stained and painted the wood in different colors. I took out the medicine cabinet that was there and made this little shelf with matching wood. And so I've got this cool design that I did in my bathroom, okay? Now, if you're really ambitious and you got a cool idea and you wanna coordinate this with your parents, go ahead and you could do something like this, okay? Um, you could paint on wood. So here's just some wood planks that were nailed together and painted on, okay? Here's some wood pieces that were painted different colors and put up in an assemblage. Pretty easy to do. Obviously, you need the wood, you need to be able to cut the wood, you need a saw and so on. Here's some two pieces of wood that have designs painted on and they act as pillars or sculptures, okay, with abstract designs on them. Here's cut paper designs. So we did this before, but I want it to be three-dimensional. I don't want it to be flat. So if you've got colored paper and you want to fold and bend and make some type of design, here's a, just a thing that shows you different things you can do to paper, okay? That's one of your options. Another option would to be use sticks or reeds. This is basket reeds that were soaked and then wrapped around and made this looks like some kind of a bird or rooster or a peacock or something like that. Here's a wall hanging that was made completely from sticks. So obviously this is, these are materials that you can get anywhere. Go out in your yard, you'd be able to find these. How could you fasten them? You could have fastened them with screws or glue or string, okay? So here is a representational design. This looks like some kind of a bird. And here's a non-representational design. You have your option of doing either one. Both are good designs, okay? When I look at this one on the right, I think, boy, this is kind of neat. It looks like a rectangular frame of some sort, but I think it'd be neat to add a little color or maybe some other elements to it. Maybe you have um, some type of weaving in here or a rock suspended or some other natural material. So you could, this really lacks a center of interest. You could add a center of interest to something like that, okay? Now you've seen this in my room. I've got a little sculpture I made of an archer, a person shooting in bow and arrow. This sculpture I made from sticks and string many years ago, and I liked it so much, I ended up getting some larger sticks and making this much larger version of this same sculpture. Of course, it's a little different, but it's a larger version. So you might say, man, I like to make a sculpture using sticks, okay? Here's some random pieces of wood. Here's an example of representational. It looks like a little bird man. And on the right here is a collage made of cut logs and pieces of wood that are glued and stained different colors uh, and made as an abstract sculpture, okay? Here's another abstract sculpture, a non-representational sculpture made of sticks and stones. And here's one that's made of toothpicks and obviously it looks like an elephant, okay? Here's a very crude version of a fish, but I love this. Isn't it cool? Almost looks like some kind of uh, ancient uh, Native American uh, construction. Um, so you could make something like that. Now on the right, we've got a series of little wooden dowel rods or sticks made in some kind of a wall hanging. Uh, I love it. I think it's pretty cool, especially with the lighting. Um, maybe I'd like to see a little more variety in it. You might like that same thing, but you might see an idea like this and say, man, I would love to do that. And now you have to figure out how you're gonna do that. You're gonna glue it, you're gonna string it together, you're gonna screw it together. What are you gonna do, okay? Now, if you think, I wanna make this, but I don't have the means to put it together, you could make it on a flat surface and photograph it and hand that in as your design, okay? Um, here's some other things that people have done. Here, obviously, this looks like some kind of a face made from found objects that were put together. And the one on the right is made from nothing but rocks. Now, I'm not sure if this was done in Photoshop or something. You notice they have a few rocks that look sort of like a, uh, eyes and a nose, and they kind of designated the mouth. So you could do something like this and photograph it, and that be your project. 
Here's some rocks arranged in an abstract manner to make almost an abstract sculpture. Maybe you go down to Lake Michigan and you stack rocks. I've seen people do this and I've seen them done in really creative ways. On YouTube, they have artists that make sculptures out of just found rocks. So this would be another option. Photograph it and turn this in. Here are rocks that are painted. Obviously, you need some flat, smooth rocks to do this, but isn't this clever? Using just a few rocks, painting them, and they've created this uh, peacock. And on the right over here is a series of rocks painted like strawberries. Perhaps you paint those rocks, put them in a small basket, and you've got a rock strawberry that turns into a really cool decorative design and uh, something you've created based on ideas. Now, you might see this and say, I could do that. I could turn these into grapes or apples or flowers. Um, you could do this. You could create designs on rocks and paint them. Obviously, you need different types of paints. They could be black and white. They could be color. They could be very colorful. You can make that arrangement and photograph that. You could make that arrangement and put it in some kind of a basket or something you painted or a box or on a frame or on a shelf. Lots of things you can do to create a three-dimensional sculpture design that has the elements of design in it. Here is a basket that looks sort of like cactuses that somebody made of rocks, okay? Here's a large painted rock. And you might have an idea, and I've, you could get ideas like this. I've got a large rock on my patio that holds a gate from swinging against our window. And uh, I, I haven't done that, but I think it'd be really cool to paint that rock to look like something like this. Of course, if you wanted it to weather outside, you'd probably have to coat it with some kind of a varnish, but look into that. Um, obviously do a little research. You could go on YouTube and find things or ask somebody at a hardware store, what's the best way to preserve? What's the best paint to use? And so on, okay? Here is a sort of a butterfly that's made from found objects. Looks like parts of a pine cone and obviously pine needles and uh, a leaf. You know, this is something that's maybe is assembled on a flat surface and then photographed. So you could even assemble something and not glue any of it together. So art doesn't necessarily have to be permanent. It can be temporary. I'll say sort of like a, like a wedding cake. You have a wedding cake that's very elaborate and beautiful and it took artistry and skill and talent and then people eat it. Doesn't mean it wasn't art, it just means it wasn't very long lasting, okay? Here's a sculpture that was made from plastic spoons and painted. Here's one on the right that's made from regular spoons and laid out. Maybe these were attached, I'm not sure. Now you might have a dad that's got talents that can bend metal and solder metal and create a little creature like this, which is an awesome sculpture. It incorporates the elements of design. It's super creative, and it's done with nothing but spoons, but obviously you need a little help with that probably, okay? Here is a sculpture made from found objects. These look like little spice containers and part of a brush and little odd objects that were assembled together. I don't know if these were welded or glued or what. A hot glue gun might work for something like this, uh, but you'd have to experiment and play around. Sort of like when I did that mailbox, I didn't know where I was headed with that mailbox. I knew the idea that I had and I knew what I wanted to do, uh, but I didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. I had to turn pieces over and experiment and try different pieces here and there and so on. I love this little sculpture. It's really creative. Here's some other sculptures made a little more crudely and also a little more elaborately. This just has a few pieces of wood and screws and a bent fork. Uh, this is made of glued little toys all piled into this teddy bear. Not sure what they use as a base. Here's obviously other sculptures that I think look awesome, but of course take some time and talent and expertise and know how to do that. Okay, so here's some of those same types of sculptures. Uh, here's a sculpture I found that's named for muffing the battle, bottle caps. Obviously you need a bunch of bottle caps, but I don't know what you have at your house. Maybe you've got a collection of things you can combine to make a sculpture. Here, that other one obviously looked like a, um, like a bird. And this one here is completely abstract, very similar to glass mosaics we were making, only they used bottle caps and glued them on the surface. Awesome looking design, okay? Look at this, a simple sculpture made from matchsticks. What I love, it's got a theme. You've got this match that's like kicking the habit of smoking the cigarettes, like keep away from me. Super clever, not super involved or super complicated, but obviously really creative, really clever, okay? Uh, and done when photographed in a really neat way. Look at even the cigarettes there. Um, I found this on the internet, which I think is pretty cool. It's called Tattooing Bananas. And if you go to this little uh, website here, look it up, Tattooing Bananas, easy to find. There's an artist that takes little pins and pricks it into a banana, and then those little holes turn dark as a banana sort of gets old and decays. 
So you can actually make designs or, or drawings or things on bananas. Here's a banana that has painted designs on it, okay? Um, here's a Starbucks cup that was elaborately designed with a drawing and drawing materials and it looks like paint. I'm not sure what they use for this, but taking a regular ob object and decorating it in a really creative and fun way, okay? Here's designs or little sculptures that were made from food, food that was cut up and assembled. You probably want to use pins to do this or little paper clips or, or perhaps uh, toothpicks. Not sure exactly how to do that, but it's an experimenting with food. Here's another food experiment. You think this isn't really that hard. It's not. The idea is hard. The idea is clever. The idea is unique. So look at some of your ideas. Here's a picture that was made from Skittles. Okay. Here is a little skull, a picture that was made from food laid out on a plate and photographed. So this is something you don't even have to glue. You're just laying things out in a very creative way. Very clever, very creative, awesome idea. Okay. Uh, last option. If you wanted to bake something and decorate it in a really creative and neat way, you could do that. You might say, Hey, this is a great idea. I'm going to make a really cool sculpture out of cake because my dad's birthday's coming up and I think this would be an awesome thing to do. And so not only that, as I'd be making a gift for somebody, but I'm doing it in a unique way. But when I say this, I don't just want you to make a cake and decorate it. Okay. Come up with something unique and different and creative that incorporates the elements of design, okay? Now, don't do this. Don't be a leaker and say, oh, okay, I made a face. There we go, all done. There's my project done. Don't do something that's so utterly simple uh, and not very clever. Um, so think of something a little more worthy of your talent. So just like puzzles, you can get puzzles that are really simple or you can get puzzles that are very complex. Uh, and I want you to do something that is um, up to your standards, okay? So first brainstorm a list of materials and uh, use categories or idea triggers to use it, use this power, or you could use this PowerPoint again. Look through some of these ideas and say, I kind of like that idea and look it up, okay? So what I've done and I want you to do to start is you're gonna come up with some, uh, this is a, a mind ma a map, and what I did is first I've got a balloon here, some materials, and I just started listing any materials I can think, and just like when we were doing the, uh, the letter designs, don't get too wrapped up in um, whether your idea is a good idea. Just list, 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 and you might find discover something you never thought by coming up with a list. So here, list of materials, a list of possible subjects. If you're gonna make a representational, do you wanna make animals, humans, robots, landscapes? What do you wanna do? What's your subject gonna be? Uh, also think of, is it gonna be useful or functional? Do I want to decorate a mailbox, a jewelry box, a picture frame, a wall covering? Do I want to make it a functional design or is it just going to be purely aesthetic and for looks? And then also think about colors. Do I want to incorporate paint with this? What are the colors that I want? Do I want blues because they want to relate to water? I want brights like ideas of the summer. Okay. And once again, you can return to that PowerPoint and look at some of those ideas and think, I want to do something around that idea. So if you see something you really like, say, why do I like that? And what about it do I want to use in my own idea, okay? So your directions, brainstorm a list of materials, use categories as idea triggers, use this PowerPoint again, okay? Do, do you want your design to be temporary or permanent? Think about that, okay? Do you want your design to be representational or non-representational? Do you want your design functional or just decorative, okay? Don't do it just for the grade. Do it because it's something you're really going to be proud of, something that's really unique, that's yours, something that created that's uniquely yours. You must follow the elements of design, especially repetition and balance. It can have a center of interest. Variety is usually a good choice to make it a little bit more interesting, okay? When is it due? Uh, your idea proposal is due by Thursday. So by Thursday, I wanna see a list of uh, ideas, just like before, just a little sketch of different ideas, and I want you to email that to me, okay? Or if you think, I want to do this. If there's a proposal you have and you think, I didn't see that on Mr. Graziano's PowerPoint, can I do this? Email me a proposal. I'll look at it. I can you know, correspond with you on email and talk about that with you. Uh, your first pictures. What are first pictures? What are you going to use for resources? Do you have taking pictures? And if you start it, take pictures of some of the things you've already started. So by Friday, you have to be started on this and have some pictures to put into your PowerPoint that show you the direction that you started. It could be the materials laid out at a table. 
It could be some of the things you're going to put together. It could be you actually starting on it, or it even could be the finished thing. The final project is due in two weeks. Even though this semester is longer than that, you know, if I gave you four weeks, most people wouldn't start it to the last week anyhow. So I figured the final project, two weeks, Friday, May 22nd, if you get it done by then, uh, you're done. You're done with everything. And this project's got to be worth more than your other things you've done. It's a pretty big project. Um, must be worthy of your age and efforts. Like it said, don't throw two oranges and banana on a plate and call it done. Uh, Pinterest has great ideas. Google Images have great ideas. So if you think, hey, I'd like to paint on wood, look up paint on wood in Pinterest. You'll see some ideas. Look up paint up wood in Google Images. And some things will pop up, give you ideas. But make it your own. Don't plagiarize. Don't just find something on Pinterest and copy it. I'm going to do that exact same thing. Make it your own, okay? And do it because it's awesome. Don't do this just because you want to get the assignment done. I know you do have to get the assignment done, but do it because it's something, not only you, you're getting an assignment done, but you're doing, you're making something you're going to be really proud of, okay? Uh, I'm going to put the final designs into a YouTube video. So I'm just going to have a, a, like a slideshow YouTube video that I'm going to put on so everybody to see. So have something you'd be proud of to have on that video, okay? And that's going to be it for now. So I am going to um, stop recording here, and uh, hopefully you guys get going on this. And good luck. I'm really looking forward to it.